Welcome to Knobcat Games Dungeons of the Obelisk podcast. I'm your host, Joe Sleppy. I'm Executive Prime at Knobcat Games. And this is our audio devlog where we get together every two weeks and talk about the progress of our game, which is Dungeons of the Obelisk, a 2D turn-based dungeon crawling loot grinding adventure. And I'm joined today by our digital alchemist, TJ Edisernia. Hello. And it's just the two of us for today. So, um... (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what that means, <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll just uh, get right into stuff with the uh, server update, which is the big thing that everybody, I'm sure, is waiting to to hear about. You know, because that's the that's the main thing. Once the servers are up and running, and we've done a little bit of testing ourselves, that's basically the point where we'll be ready to open it up and and start getting some more people on. So, um, what's the progress with that looking like? Yeah, so, as usual, I've been hitting walls and struggling to <laughs> get past these walls, but with <laughs> the most recent one, I got the server, so I can get it onto PlayFab just fine. I got it on, this time around, I got it so that the player requests a server so that they can actually like reach it and connect to it, and then the server finally said, well, the player finally said they're connected to the server for like 30 seconds. So, <laughs> which is some progress. <laughs> it is progress. It's a lot better than like originally. I I eventually got it on to PlayFab, but then I couldn't even get the player to remotely get close to attempting a connection. So now they can connect for a very short time, and it's just a matter of figuring out why can't they stay connected. Yeah, I'm sure it's just like something. It's probably just something stupid. It's always just something stupid, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it tends to be. I feel like. <laughs> From what I've been trying to read, it sounds like it might be something related to the conversation between computers and servers. It's like the server's trying to talk to your computer and your computer's trying to talk to the server, but one of those two things doesn't work, so they just disconnect. Right. But I've been thinking about how to go about like trying to f- solve the answer and I guess who to ask. like. What is wrong with this and why is it broken? <laughs> Which I've been yeah. recommended this before and I think I might have to just try it as the uh you know, the AI chat GPT. Oh really? <laughs> Some people I've talked to that also are programmers, they said that it works. Like it surprisingly is good at taking your problem and giving you if not a solution, but something that leans towards a solution. Yeah. Yeah. I heard it's good at like just coming up with different ways to look at stuff too, you know? Yeah, like, it can look at it from a different angle, and I feel like it's a lot more complex than, like, how Google will take your problem and try to give you websites to solve it. This will actually, you know, give you full descriptions. Just kind of, like, feed it the info, and it'll solve the problem. Yeah, which is kind of (laughs) scary. I guess I don't want to get into all that right now, but it's pretty wild. I was just watching a video yesterday that was a a guitar pedal that was designed by ChatGPT. So it just does all kinds of stuff, I guess. It's interesting. Yeah. I primarily hear about it writing essays for people. Yeah, that seems... That almost seems like more work to me, because you'd have to, like, go through and proofread it, right? So it wasn't, like... I I don't know. (laughs) I guess I'd have to mess with it, but it seems wild. I feel like it probably, to a degree, would be tough, because, you know, you're trying to get it to write an essay. I guess if you describe it well enough... You could probably do it pretty well. Spend four hours telling it what kind of essay you wanted to write instead of uh, (laughs) just writing your essay yourself. (laughs) It's like at that point, you spent the same amount of time writing the essay anyways. That's always how it goes. You spend more time trying to get out of work than if you just did it. (laughs) That was kind of like whenever that issue we had a while ago where... um, the server stuff i can't remember the specific thing but it wouldn't work because you didn't have the windows pro oh yeah and you were trying to find the workaround for it and i was like let's just buy it because if you spend more than three hours trying to find the workaround 
then <laughs> we could have just bought it to start with. Yeah, it's like situations like that pop up. I don't even know if there was a workaround because obviously I gave up trying to find one. But. <laughs> yeah, I think in the long run that that was the right choice. I think it gave my computer access to things they didn't have before. Like maybe I always had access to it, but something called PowerShell on your computer. I don't even know what that is. I didn't even know what it was either until I started using it. It's like, almost feels like the command box that you can pop up on your computer, which I don't know what makes it different from the command box, because they're basically the same. PowerShell's just blue. Okay. Hmm. It's like, as far as I'm aware, it's just visually blue, and that's the whole difference. <laughs> right on. We have been working on crushing some bugs and stuff lately. We've, we've opened it up to a, a couple more people for testing basically like very close friends and and um spouses and stuff like that like my wife's been playing and and uh i know you had a friend or two that that hopped on and helped us find a few bugs but definitely had some like weird stuff going on i think the the big lingering issue that we have is that people who already have accounts can like log in and play fine but people with new accounts Ha are having issues but we can't test those issues because we already have an account yeah i've been seeing that a lot with those who started to test it because like i cannot copy any of the issues they've had it's just it won't happen but they yeah. can get it to happen instantly but then they can never happen again it's like they have trouble opening up the tutorial loot box which i've never seen and i don't think any of us have ever seen that issue before no, that loot box has been in the game. That was there before you got here, right? Um, no, I remember. I might have moved in. it around, but oh, okay, you did. Yeah. I know we had like, oh yeah, the it was like you would just start with the items in your inventory, I think, and then you yeah. changed it to like the loot box, yeah. But that's been in for a long time, so it's like weird that we're having like issues with it. Yeah, it's like never saw an issue with it. It's worked though, basically the whole time since I added it and new players are having an issue with it which is interesting to see yeah it's it's kind of weird to me that um it, does the game need to have like an uninstall button i know you can uninstall from steam now but does that go out and grab everything if if you uninstall that way i would have to check because i want to say i mean your account would still be lingering on the server yeah, you have your account on server I think, because I don't play PC games enough to know about un you know, uninstalling Steam games, but I think it keeps your, like, save data, certain save data. Yeah, I think it probably just depends. I, I don't know. It's, it's weird because we need a way to, like, I basically need another computer that I've never played the game on so that I can, <laughs> so that I can, like, open it up and make a new account and, and play a fresh one. It's weird that we can't get everything deleted that might be an issue we need to look into so that you know like a real player like once the game is live is never going to delete their stuff yeah but we need to be able to delete our stuff for testing so that we can see what a new player is going to see yeah but if i gotta try that i think i'm not sure i can because i have it both on steam and on unity so i want to say to a certain right. degree it can reach into unity to pull the info that it might need yeah but like for me i should be able to like uninstall it from steam find the folder on my computer and delete that and then you delete me from the server and then i should be like totally fresh right yeah like that should guarantee purely new account as if you never had played before yeah i think we're gonna have to mess with that like maybe when we're done recording if you have time um <laughs> and see see what we can do because we definitely can't have every new player like crash as soon as they open the tutorial chest yeah that <laughs> it just seems seems bad <laughs> although it was only once like both of them they walk up to it they open it it doesn't work they log out and then it works right yeah i know that we were having an issue a long time ago i can't remember exactly what it was but it was like when you opened oh it was with the uh dev panel so we have the dev panel that can open the loot creator, which I haven't used in a long time. But every time you would open the loot creator, if you hadn't already opened your inventory in the game, 
the loot creator would like bug out. Oh yeah. And, like because of that inventory. So I'm wondering if there's like maybe something residual like from that. Yeah, that might be the case. You know, because then as soon as you closed out of it, opened your inventory in the re- regular game, then went back into the dev panel and opened the loot creator, then you had you were fine. Because yeah, this could be looking for something that doesn't exist, and then instead of doing what it's supposed to, they just get stuck. Right. But any lingering, like any of the older accounts seem to just have it all ready to go. Yeah. We'll have to not forget that the dev panel is there. <laughs> we'll have to remove that <laughs> once it eventually. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> New players are playing, they just start spawning loot. There's a dude level 1,000. Yeah, it's pretty easy to, to level up with the... the dev panel <laughs> you just <laughs> click a couple buttons and you're like level a thousand as far as i'm aware the playtesters haven't found it yet oh really <laughs> <laughs> i know i know my friend knows about it that that because we had talked about it before but because we were trying some stuff to get his game to work but yeah that's kind of funny well like if you don't know look for it then then you probably wouldn't find it but somebody would find it eventually yeah, guaranteed someone who would just have it to click the button and say, oh, what's this? See if I can make use of it. <laughs> oh, there is one cool little feature that I've actually been working on to get in and advance is the, uh, the mailbox. Oh, yeah, I did get a little bit of time to, to mess with the version you have now. I feel like, so the mailbox right now is a way for us to give, like, uh, I guess, like mail packages to players. Yeah. Like, if we ever had, you know, a Christmas present or something, then we're able to toss that in really easy. Yeah, you mean a Glubmas. Glubmas. <laughs> <laughs> but, holiday. but, yeah, it, that's the idea. You know, the server goes down, we can send them the, you know, thanks for coming back, sorry for the interruption kind of thing. Um, you know, holidays, you know, probably having something there just for new players would be nice. Just a little thanks for getting the game kind of thing. You know, I definitely want to be able to, like, give people stuff, you know, as, like, little bonuses for sticking around and and continuing to play. I was also thinking that might be a good place for a friend request to go. Yeah, when I was working on it, I was thinking, it's like, this could easily also handle friend requests. Because not only does it give loot to people, but it also has, like, it can tell you who sent this thing, who, like, what are they saying in the message, why did they send it? So it could just have friend requests instead of it's, like... This guy, Jim Tim over here, sent you a friend request. Yeah, do you accept or, or deny? Yeah, that seems like a good way to do it. I was going to bring that up. We should probably... I, I definitely want to talk about that kind of stuff offline, off the recording too, and maybe get some of the details ironed out on how that should work since that's, you know, beyond the scope of what what has been in the uh, master doc. You know, we're kind of... We've kind of done everything that's in the master doc, and we're kind of off off grid now. Yeah, working on, I guess, like some of those extra features that are important but wasn't listed. Yeah, they were more. Um, the master doc was more about like gameplay and stuff, and it had reference to some of these things, but I didn't go into depth on them like I probably should have. So, you know, we need to iron those out, and maybe I do need to update the master doc on on a few things so that we can or make a new doc for for like chat and stuff just some of the issues but yeah that'll be interesting to have (laughs) working it actually while working on it made me realize that the uh the code system that we have where you like type in the code and get stuff for it was oh yeah also outdated and could start pulling some of the features from the mailbox because like we need yeah. a way where you know we don't want to play it to type in the code and then type it in again and then just keep doing it to gain the items <laughs> right exactly like right now the the codes you can use like I, ha- I have one where you can get a legendary crown or whatever and i, I use that every time i test <laughs> just to get <laughs> just to get it but you can just like type it in like 50 times until you get like a good roll or something which isn't how it should work yeah, i need um, a natural limitation on it say that hey this player already got it don't give it to him again yeah exactly yeah that is something we'll have to look at too we're either gonna have to remove that or or get it working too but yeah it's kind of weird there's kind of a lot of little features left and every time we start talking about them i like realize how much there still is which is a little little scary whenever I look at the budget. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see that. 
Uh, some of the things could... It would be a shame to have to disable some things, but they could be, like... I like the idea of the, you know, the reward code system, but something like that could always be turned off. Yeah, we might have to turn it off for a little bit if we don't get to it. That's probably going to be... Probably going to have to make a list of things in order of how they need finished, um, you know, and prioritize in case we do run out of budget. Yeah. Because a lot of those things... Like, the codes are kind of important because that was kind of how we were going to promote um, stuff to streamers, you know, be able to give them a code and let them get in and mess around on stream with a few extra items and stuff, you know, so they could have, you know, longer play period or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if we have to disable those, we could always give them stuff through the mailbox, too. Yeah, it's a good thing about the mailbox is that it's, it's almost like a code system, but slightly different yeah yeah is it um i guess i guess it depends how it's set up but there's probably got to be different ways where one where you can send something to every active player and then one where you can send to specific players and, and then of course like the friend requests and stuff but i guess it depends on how we do it because uh playfab has a almost mail system it's weird how they do it because i could set it so that it'll give things to people but it doesn't tell them which is the oh, yeah. inconvenient thing about it. Like, I'll, I'll toss them an item, they wouldn't even notice. Yeah, I see what you mean. It goes straight into your inventory, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, Ben drew the um, mailbox icon, so he has one with some mail as well sticking out of it, so you know when you have something. I think you should still put the little red alert icon next to it, too, but we do have, like, the mailbox. I can't remember if it had a flag up or just had some mail sticking out of it, but... Either way, yeah, it looks actually, pretty cool. I got that in today, and I like it. It's like <laughs> stuffed full of nail falling out of it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a flag. <laughs> right on. Yeah, which makes sense because the flag is actually up when you put mail in your mailbox so that the, the driver knows. Oh, yeah, to like, take it back, isn't it? Yeah, to take it, and then they put your mail in and put the flag down. <laughs> so it's always backwards like in cartoons. You always see the flag up. When, when Spongebob has mail, you know? <laughs> so I can't even do that if I wanted to. My mailbox is attached to the wall of the house. And it's just like, a, it's a metal box, so there's nothing to flip up on it. Alright, so you, you don't put your outgoing mail in there, probably? No. <laughs> right. Although, I don't mail things either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, like, let's see, like... Father's Day, Mother's Day cards, I think, is the most recent thing I've mailed. <laughs> like, we don't put much outgoing mail. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely not as common anymore, because, you know, it's easier to... People can just text or call these days. Yeah, or send an email. Like, even, like, a fax is more more technologically advanced than than that. So I don't know. I haven't worked, personally haven't worked with fax before. No, that's pretty outdated too. But even that, like uh, I had to do uh, something for, like at the doctor's office, had to mail something into my insurance. You know. Oh yeah, they and, still fax. And she faxed it to them, <laughs> for me. <laughs> but I haven't done. I haven't faxed something in like, fifteen years at least. <laughs> I feel like it's like medical stuff where they fax things consistently because. Yeah, it's like a business thing, I think. Like, I think oh, if you sure. have, like, a real estate business or something like that, you're faxing documents all the time. But, like, you know, normal people <laughs> don't do not do that. Oh, I'm glad to really funny. sit in the cluster of normal people. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Is there anything else in Dungeons of the Obelisk? <laughs> so, the, the Playfab mailbox thing. I sent everybody a trash helmet and I realized that it's like everyone has the helmet it's all sitting in your inventory but you can't use it because it is a default version and because it's in the default version it doesn't have any stats or anything <laughs> okay so every player has a helmet that doesn't like it exists and it doesn't exist at the same time so I probably like salvaged it and never even noticed huh no it can't even be salvaged because it's like, it exists in the Playfab inventory, but it doesn't get into the game's inventory. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's just, like, lost in the void, I guess. <laughs> no, I've just been, I've just been, like, testing with my character from the boss reveal stream. I still have Sniff as my <laughs> character, and I've been, like, leveling up. I actually finally got the achievement where I have all legendaries. Oh, nice. 
So I was grinding that out the uh, yesterday. I'm trying to decide if I want to start a new character. I think we need to try and wipe my whole character and, and start over. But I'm thinking about like doing some more streaming and stuff. Like, you know, maybe streaming some of my testing and things. Oh, yeah. Like, run through some playthroughs and such. Just to hop on and have something to do, I think. I think people might be interested. You know, it's cool. Every time I make a new character, which is relatively consistently, it resets my achievements. Yeah. I always, I was playing, like, messing around the one, like, it's been a week or two now, but it would show that I got the same achievement, like, three times a day. <laughs> only slightly broken. The That is something we haven't... Did we talk about, like, all the art that Ben did for the achievements? I think it, it all looks really cool. Like, seeing it in Steam is really, uh, really, um... I don't know, surreal. <laughs> it, it makes the game look very official in the almost finished Steam page. Yeah, I definitely like it now that it actually has some art getting into it, because, you know, we looked at the Steam page originally, it just it was like bare bones, it you know, has the name, and then that's it. But yeah, we got these achievements sitting here, it's going to look nicer. It also says I've played for 49 hours, and it wants, me to, wants to know if I recommend the game to other players. <laughs> I got uh, 115 hours according to this. Oh wow, I'm gonna have to catch up. I wonder if, I feel like mine's kinda broken. Cause, I mean it says that I'm like actively playing it, but I'm just connected through Unity. I'm not actually have the Steam version open. Oh right so on, I yeah. I attack on <laughs> hours a lot. It's like if my computer's on then I guess technically I'm playing the game. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I would like to see that store page like actually existing in Steam, but I feel like well, so we can't do that unless it's like near ready to release. I think from what Steam said. Yeah, we're waiting on a trailer. Brittany's working on the on the trailer, uh, so I'm hoping we sense. have that pretty soon. That's basically the last thing I think we need, other than like a few little descriptions and stuff. Um, that should be the last thing we need before we can put the coming soon page up. Yeah, that definitely would be nice to see. Then you can. I want to say once it's like that, you can probably like search on it through Google or the Steam store itself, and then it pops up. Yeah, and we can link to it from our website and stuff, and get people to like you know wish list it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It'll be interested. It'll be cool to see that. That'll be a metric where we can really gauge the interest, you know, and see how how many people are actually interested in it. Yeah. So when I had done that with my previous game, I had worked on it was kind of like that was a big turning point on the game's release and you'd be surprised how many people end up downloading a game like even so the game i had worked on there was no you know no publicity in any way nobody knew it existed right. except for those that we had told but it's somehow like even now still sells on occasion oh that's cool yeah for us i think we should i think we'll show up in the free to play pretty high up because the game looks good i think it's gonna have enough interest just from like the artwork and stuff and then Steam does have that like oh what's it called where you can go through and it recommends like a bunch of games to you and you can tell it if you are interested or not oh yeah so I think a lot of people probably do that when they're looking for games like I know I do so if, if it gets us on there even if you're far down the list people go through that list you know I go through it like three or four times sometimes and get to the end and I'm not interested in anything so I'm just hoping you know you know, if it shows somebody like a free to play dungeon crawler game, like why the hell wouldn't you check it out? You know, mm -hmm. which is what I want. You know, I want people to get on and play it. You know, that's why it's free to play. You know, I don't want there to be like a barrier to entry for people. You know, I want them to be able to get on and play it for free. And if they want to play it for years for free, that's fine with me, you know, and, and then those shop things are there for when, when they have money and, decide to support it you know yeah i like the idea of uh free to play games like i've played a variety of them and i mean if they're good you know people do end up spending money because i don't like spending money on in-game purchases but on a good free game i end up doing it yeah i i think spending like 80 dollars up front for a game i don't know if i'm gonna like it or not is crazy to me nowadays i know a lot of people do that you know but like even like a Zelda game or something like that is sixty bucks or something. I haven't bought one recently, but but the like I know the 
you know stuff on your switch and stuff they want 60 or 70 bucks like up front and you know something like mario or zelda like you're you got a good chance of knowing you're gonna like it but something like ours who knows you know like I don't expect everybody to like this kind of game, you know, this is a specific kind of grinding for loot kind of game that not everybody likes. So, but if you can get in there and try it for free, then what have you lost, you know? And then once you decide you do like it, then putting a little bit of money into it, like, I I think makes sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've had that, you know, like I had said before multiple times, you know, you play the free game, you like it, you end up putting a couple of dollars into it, you know, put some cash into it, and like even if you just put sixty into it, you now just equaled the price yeah. of a standard game. Exactly, which isn't that bad. And you have the cool glove armor or something, you know, <laughs> to show for it. You know, what you had uh, said before, where you start to see like the game, and you know how it like shows more like this, where it shows games that are related to it, because that definitely works. And I've seen that with the previous game. It's like it's there, and then it changed to other ones, like our that other game had shown that it has connections to like Risk of Rain or Hades or other uh, similar roguelike games so if people are looking at those games then they end up chaining onto the game that you had created which I feel like would yeah like that's incredibly likely for uh, dungeons to lead into yeah I think so like I've already gone through and done all the tags and stuff in Steamworks where you tag all your genres and search terms and all that stuff. So um, it's it's all basically ready to go, I think, with as far as that respect. Um, you know, so I'm hoping some people find it. And then, of course, we have Brittany doing some marketing and social media and stuff. So I think once it comes out and we're able to post, instead of posting like, hey, coming soon, what do you think of this artwork? When we can post like, hey, here's this cool thing you can do in a game that you can go download right now on Steam. Like, people are going to be more interested, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that definitely ropes in people once you have, like, this is available now, you can download it. Yeah, exactly. Um, We're over 30 minutes on our recording. I know we were like, what are we going to talk about (laughs) this episode? But we've we've made it. (laughs) Somehow (laughs) figure it out. yeah, I think we're at the end. Um, yeah, unless you have anything else important you want to bring up. I think I should be all set. <laughs> right on. In that case, you know, thank you for listening to the end of this podcast, getting the whole way through. Um, we really appreciate your interest in our game, and hopefully this was pretty entertaining to you. If you haven't already, go to knobcat.com, find the link to the Discord, you know, check out all the stuff there, talk to us, ask us any questions you might have. Um, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. Those are both at Dungeons Obelisk. And I think that's everything. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. See you.